water like? Uh, do, do you have water? Water is quite, quite. Uh, quite quite good at bouncing light around. So especially in this kind of environment where there's a lot of little waves dangling around. So this is this is what that light area is. So if I turn this on and on, you can see, doing, doing, right? A little bit of indicated light for the water, basically lighting this up from a secondary light source. Um, we start defining some of the forms up here. You can see. Now his little spikes here, these little um, fins, whatever. They're darker. They're not. This is not because of light. This is simply because local value. For example, a um, let me just do some very quick sketches here to sh illustrate that. A a, a laptop, uh, say a PC laptop, primarily are are black. So no matter what lighting condition you are in, a PC laptop is always black. Even if I put a very bright light up to it right now, it will look black. So this is your typical. Whoops. Let's get some darker grays in here. All right, this is a very typical uh, PC laptop value right here. Right, they have a screen. So no matter what lighting condition this this is at, you're always being black, and that's the local value. That's the material. That's what this thing is made out of. Uh, material has color palettes in it, and different color palettes carry different intensity of light. Uh, you know, black absorbing a lot of the colors, therefore you're getting this kind of uh, color range. Whereas, for example, you go to a, an, an apple or something like that, it's inherently lighter on value. So here is a you know say a MacBook or something like that. You know, it's got, got brushed aluminum color. So its local value is always like this. So if I put these two laptops next to each other, one will always be lighter than the other in value, independent of a light source. So let me put a shadow on these so you can see. And that's very good to remember. Okay, this is two local values here, and they have nothing to do with a light source. It's just a one light, one star. So what's happening here with the fin is that that this fin is actually darker. It's just inherently darker. It doesn't even if a light is shining on it, this will be lighter than here. Okay, so hopefully you guys uh, get that point. So let me nuke these very bad drawings of computers. Think. Okay, and now I'm gonna start getting rid of the line drawing. When you shrink these small and we get rid of the line drawing, it still reads. You're on a you're on a good start because now the line drawing no longer needs to be there to hold. Yeah, if I delete it, you can see here on and off. Even without it, the forms are reading. Okay, there's definitely a fat form happening here. There's reflected light. There's some kind of shape happening. There's a nice cut right here. These things are all starting to read without the aid of a line, and that's always good in the early beginning of a of a painting. So you're not depending on the line work. Okay. So from this point on, actually not keep a line on anymore. Here's our secondary details, and at this point, you shrink it small, like you see in the other ones. You see that it's very very um, uh, good as a read so therefore you can start your detail paints because it's very hard to mess it up now it's uh, your major forms are there so here I go in and for example I kick up the bounce light there's even more of that and especially with the bold right here a lot of little light is gonna bounce in here let me go to a red uh, paint here so it's gonna go boom boom Wah, I want red boom 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 right that's what's gonna happen with the light same with the water it's gonna get here go dun, 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 and then get escape you know some get do, 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 do. so this this area here a lot of little surface to bounce even the arm here that area here it's gonna get a lot of the secondary bounce light and up here you got the primary light and we don't have a very uh, a very strong light source even though the clouds here look very bright that it might not be the actual sun the sun might not be back there it's just some, the sun could be actually behind this and just lighting that sky uh, that part of the cloud up so it gives a little bit more freedom in this case to kind of play around with these highlights because there is no strong sun anywhere uh, so we could kind of indicate some highlights here and there but I kind of assume the light is a little bit uh, behind this camera you can see here is a highlight right here that could possibly indicate the position of a sun. So, but for now, I think it works uh, even without it. So you can see what I did here. Just start going in and adding details, punching up his skin, adding some of these kind of frog-like uh, highlights so his skin is not super smooth. Added uh, eyeballs, quite important. All these teeth. So all these teeth are all being, uh, you know, teeth is white, whitish, right? Ivory colors. So they're gonna be uh, much lighter in value than the area around him. So even if it's in darkness, the the teeth will read. And especially in an entertainment context, you want that those very important features of a design to to pop. Um, here I added some characters. Now in the student's original image, which I'll show you here. Bonk. He's got this very bad stick figure here. Um, generally, you know, just my personal taste, I don't like to actually show violence that's happening as 
as you know during the painting, you know this guy's being jabbed by by you know this huge spike, or whatever. It's much better to indicate that and let the let the audience think what's going to happen next. Because once you show something, it's too late. You know, just like the hint of something about to happen is better than actually showing it happen. Uh, so in this case, it's the same thing. Uh, whoops, let me delete this student one. Instead of having some guy being eaten by this monster, I just indicated some people kind of uh, running away from it. So the audience will see this and go, okay, what's going to happen next? Is this guy going to use his hand and just hit everybody? Is he going to come and bite everybody? You don't know. And that creates a sense of tension. It moves the image forward instead of saying, hey, this is what happened. That's it. No, sorry, that's not, not, there's nothing left to see. Here he goes. Right? This way, you can leave, the, uh, leave some of the painting open for the audience. So, And those guys are also kind of running away at this angle. And I'll explain all these... Uh, why do these angles later? Uh, they don't read that well here. You can see there are dark value on dark value. So this only this guy here is dark on light. This, these guys are all kind of melting together. So what I did here is I add a little bit of local value shift to pop them out. So you can see the difference here when we zoom out. You can't see, now you can. So now these little figures pop in front of the uh, the boat and the guy's hand, the creature's hand. Uh, here just some very minor details here. I kind of cleaned up some of his teeth. Okay, 